What's up? So today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite activities and that is skull hunting. Now this video is not particularly on shed hunting, but as you can see, I am out in some prime country to find skulls. Now let's go over some key points on what to do, what not to do, and is it even worth getting out there on your property? Let's find out. Now, before we begin, we're gonna go over a very critical rule of skull hunting. So as you can see, I'm on my phone walking through the woods. Stop, if you're doing that, sit yourself down. If you get on your phone, stop, freeze. Because as you're looking around and you're on your phone, you're gonna miss that skull or the shed. And that's bad. Now the reason it's bad is because you're gonna come back next year and the critters have, are gonna have chewed every single bit of horn off those skulls. Just like shed hunting, this is critical. Bring your binoculars. If you see something that looks like a skull, then you need to pull up your binoculars and look at it because I promise you, crawling over there and examining every single little brown leaf or white leaf or stick is not worth it. Bring these. Is it even worth getting out there on my property? Well, the answer, if you have land, enough land, the answer is definitely yes. If you have access to a wildlife management area, you have thousands of acres. Are there skulls out there? Yes. So there could be, you know, I don't know, 10, 20 on a whole big wildlife management area. The other thing is, is depending on the buck to doe ratio, they could be does. Most of them could be does. There could be 12 doe skulls and eight buck skulls. And the doe skulls are a whole lot easier to find for some reason. That's just how it is. There's nothing against going to wildlife management area and getting in the thick stuff, the really thick stuff, because those deer will hunker down in some enclosed area and they will lay there when they're old and they will die there within the vicinity of water and food, of course, because they won't want to travel far for that if they're sick and dying. So here's what you're going to be looking for. When a skull is on the ground and it has horns, the horns can be laid back and the nose can be pointed in the air. That's a great way to spot them. You're more than likely going to spot the whole nose cone first. And then at some point, I've even found one before where you can see its teeth going down the nose cone, and you're like, that's definitely a skull. And then more rarely, it's the other way. The nose is buried into the dirt and the uh, horns are propping it up. In that case, you'll see the horns first. Any other way, it could just be resting on a log pile or you know, the usual in the grass or something like that. One more crucial part of why I love skull hunting, and that is finding a ghost. Now, what's a ghost? Well, it's a deer you didn't know existed until you find its bones. And let me tell you, if you skull hunt long enough, you will find the ghost, the deer that nobody knew existed, didn't have trail cam photos, never spotted in the wild, never even saw in the summertime. They just never existed, to your knowledge, until you find them. That's a really big reason to skull hunt, because that's the only way you'll ever find a ghost. I don't know about you, but I got to get back to skull hunting. I'm Sam. I'm the Outdoor Game. You can follow me on Instagram. You can like my page on Facebook. Or you can subscribe to YouTube. That would greatly help me out. Thanks for watching.